As logo designers, we can struggle to come up with new ideas. And today I wanted to show you my process and the process of what a lot of professional logo designers do to generate ideas. Coming up with that perfect idea is sometimes really difficult for especially beginner logo designers and not only beginners, but people who are very seasoned in logo design. And the reason why is because they don't follow a process. So today I'm gonna to be taking you through something that I teach on my new course called Logo Launch, essentially showing you how I and the team come up with logo design ideas very fast without any pressure but also in a way that is fun before we get into it press the subscribe button like and comment all that stuff it really helps out with these videos so step number one is mind mapping slash mood boarding i'm going to pretend we've got a client today called green sleeves they technically are a client but i'm doing it for free for a video they are a framing company and they are local to where i am their logo doesn't look very good as you can see it's not the best but alex who owns the shop is a friend of ours so we're going to rebrand them and this is how i come up with ideas to make a better logo than this first of all the mind mapping the first thing i write down is the company name green sleeves just to have it in there now what i'm going to be doing now is creating connections to this so obviously we've got like henry the eighth and no, that's not how you do it, but there you go. Frame, square, Polaroid, like vintage. So I'm thinking when I'm creating this vintage, because it's Henry VIII, green sleeves, we've got those real ornate looks. So ornate, Victorian, swirls, flourishes. I don't really care most of the time when I'm creating this, whether it makes sense or not. I'm just getting words that come out of my brain onto paper in a way so I can see my thought process and I don't have to try and remember each word. So we've got a frame square Polaroid. When we think of framing and pictures, so photography, painting, wood, bespoke, Okay, we've got enough keywords there for this video. Essentially what I like is this idea of it being Victorian. Now with this, I'm going to also say minimal because these words here, if I can spell minimal, I'm gonna stop the keywords right there because right now I've got enough for the video. But essentially we've got a few different connections that we've made. Now that's allowed me to really think of some ideas. And the idea that I'm thinking of is a square frame using that. It's kind of like Nat Ge Geographic or Natural Geographic. That logo there is quite iconic now and we could do something based upon that. Now the next stage, which is just as important, is mood boarding. Now how do we get to mood board for a logo? Well, it's quite simple. There's a few ways of doing it. I use this app called Milanote to organize all of my creative work essentially you can just drag and drop pictures in here like very easily you can just double click on one upload it or you can even go to unsplash and just put it in there too with the color combination I'm choosing the colors that I see here which I like now the way that I got this work in there was by checking out Dribble and Behance. Now, a lot of people wouldn't technically put logo work in their mood boards for fear of stealing or taking work from that logo and taking a bit too much inspiration. You know when that happens, when you just see someone's logo and it looks exactly like the logo that it's not supposed to. That happens to everyone. So, what I do is I generally take ideas that I like. Every logo is based upon one that I've seen in the past and I put my own unique spin on it. Now with this, it's very Scandinavian, but this one here has a very vintage and ornate look to it. I like this frame border on the outside, but it is a bit too much for this service. This one here, I just liked how it was laid out and I've gone for this minimal feeling with also having this Scandinavian feel to it as well this minimalistic idea now i'm generating a mood here which is similar to the colors that i love which is brown and green and yellows so that's all the autumn nature colors as you see in the office everything is brown green or orange and kind of like yellow that's just what we love as part of the brand the colors that we have kind of matches my hair in a strange way but i'm just going to go into here and add some nature images even framing ones oh this one here looks really good because you can see the actual what I'm seeing here is this sort of minimal look. It's very clean, tidy, and orderly, and we want to get that across in this design to make it not pop. I also love this idea here 
this idea here has got the cut ornate frame that I'm talking about. And obviously we don't want to go too ornate. So once you have enough inspiration and you've got all the boards out on Miller Note, the next thing is to start sketching. Now this is where it gets fun. So when sketching, there should be one rule. Sketch as much as you can in the shortest period of time. So you could give yourself 10 minutes. I'm going to just give myself one minute of sketching a few things. So first of all, I'm sketching this shape first of all here. And I don't care how bad it looks right now. I kind of like that shape. What if we had like an image all the way through it? Looking at this image over here in our mood board, I'm thinking inside of that sketch, I could try and create some depth within the frame. So if we create a minimalist sort of line art within this frame, it could be a very unique design. So what if we did that with the sun, you know, in the same thickness, maybe some mountains in the back. We could frame this up again nicely afterwards. That's one idea. Next one, square. I'm using the square as what's known as the graphic device essentially frames the design to make it look good everywhere else. It kind of becomes its own clear space to some sort. How about an idea where the actual design plays with an impossible solution? So let's see, we've got a door opening. How do we get a door to look like it's opened? Like that, maybe. I don't really like shading in these designs, but if we're able to, that would be cool. So I have this idea here where very quickly, I want the door to sort of be opened or it could be like some guides, you know, and I'm going to write that on the top there for later. For like painters, I'm thinking that if a painter is painting something, they have like guides or compositions in the golden ratio that could work pretty well. But then we could also frame it on the outside as well. So as many ideas as I can in a couple of seconds, create a better version of this. Let's thicken up this line real quick. I'm having trouble with this. Sometimes it's good to use just a blunt pencil to get the ideas out. Normally no one will be looking at your work. I'm sort of struggling with this idea here where I want it to show like some depth. You can see from me doing this, I'm not really bothered about how the, it looks. I'm just trying to get the idea out. There we go. We've got some sort of idea there that could work. Right, we could even go as simple as having the G for green sleeves inside of a frame. But I do know that I like the frames where they have some sort of part in them like so. So they look like they're coming out. So we could frame a G in there, as simple as that. And if we wanted to go a bit cartoonish, we could add those lines on the top, but I don't think that would work very well. What about this idea where we have like a starburst effect? This is very kind of Scandinavian. So we just do this, this and this. There. Now, if I was to compose this, the way that I'm thinking is, let's say this is the version here that we're going to use of the design. So it could be that that would be a good idea in my mind. And the way that I'm thinking that is because it's sort of got the plant look or the tree look, it makes it feel a bit more natural. I've got to be careful that it doesn't look too much like an eco project or something that is totally irrelevant to framing. So like, I like that top down idea there. That works pretty well. Now in the space of a few minutes, I've generated some horrible ideas on there. They don't look good right now, but in my brain, I know a few of them will work based upon experience. And this might take a bit of time for new logo designers to really get a handle of. But I know that kind of like this one here, this one and this one will work. Most of them will work to some way. It's more artistic, this design. So we could go minimal Victorian and I'm just making these connections here very fast. Square bespoke, that would be like the painting that you see in the actual frame. We could even go like square swirls, right? And with that, we could go golden ratio if I can spell. Or even what I've done here is vintage frame to also be minimal. So now that you've got those things connected up, we can actually add them together just like an equation. So vintage plus frame plus minimal equals creating this sort of frame here. Here. It looks terrible. I'll do it again. Equals an image like that, where we have the 3D look. A lot of the logo design process is the system of which you use. Now, before we go into the last bit to put all this together, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a portfolio or even just a website? If you don't, then there's a problem there because no clients can find you and no one knows where your work is unless you're just on like social media which by the way, doesn't work very well. Every graphic designer and creative should have a website where they have complete dominion and control over how they are looked at online. With social media, you don't have control of your profile. All you have control is of the content that you put out. Well, Squarespace has thousands of award-winning, fully customizable templates that you can 
fully customized without needing to know code, which is great for any graphic designers out there who don't know how to code. You can add your portfolio on there. You can create your shop on there if you want to sell design resources like we do. Add a blog for SEO purposes and a welcoming contact page as well. Without a website, you're not going to get many clients. So if you sign up with Squarespace with the link down below, who have supported this channel for a long time, thank you, Squarespace. Sign up and you'll get 10% off after your free trial because a little pro tip for you you can actually design the website before it goes live for completely free and then when it goes live you can purchase your domain get 10 percent of that if you want 10 percent off squarespace if you want it's incredible so use the link down below or use the code features on the screen right now let's bring this work into adobe illustrator So hopefully that's helped you guys understand how we generate logo design ideas. It can be quite daunting, I think, for many new designers out there to have a system. And with the system to create ideas, it, you don't feel the pressure of, you know, the divine intervention of an idea just landing into you in the shower, you know. You've got a system in place where you know you can come up with ideas on the fly. Now, if you want to learn more about Logo Launch, which is our logo type design course, first class course as well, we spent ages on this, then click the link down below. If not, just like and subscribe, comment what you think, and also share this video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. See you soon. Goodbye.